Massachusetts Census Bureau affirms that as of 2010, 23.6% of people living in Hawaii are of mixed blood. Known as a melting pot, Hawaii has been a bastion for abandoning culture and fine-tuned prejudice for decades. Our isolation provides more than enough room for discrimination. Welcome to the Aloha State, where acknowledgement is a privilege. I was about 13 when the society first told me to pick between my heritages. Three years later, a junior in my history class told me that since I wasn't brown, I could never really be Maui. According to Hawaii's general public, hybrids are equality's pipe dreams, and it would be wise to pretend they don't exist. See, in the islands, you are either one or the other, and the choice isn't always up to you. My birthright is questioned by grafters. Challenges wrapped in accusation. Schoolyard bullies with bones to pit, looking for bones to break. The locals don't like it when Howleys claim to be more than a skin color. Mm. Even in the fanal, the prize is passed out to the select few. Those with broader noses or auburn skin, my Kalheke, do not look kindly upon homology. Farano children have no purpose other than to warn against crossbreeding. Participants in this ongoing process of exclusion, my lineage is recognized but never fully accepted. This is how my tribe rules out the undesirables. Everyone knows the white members will only colonize our people in the end. Lighter colors are experts in cultural elimination and should not be trusted. Then there are the Europeans in the family who are interested in my dark features. They wonder, what this Maori side of me is exactly? My relatives are riveted by my mother's dark skin, but are cautious when asking questions, leaving me with answers that I would gladly provide if they weren't so reluctant. Instead, they focus on the roots they are familiar with and do not press. My father's side are learned people, but none have ever gained knowledge from prime. Therefore, I am a mystery. So I try remembering everything my parents tell me. Shards of Ponam, war chants in Karanga, my mother, recalls my Faka Papa, trumpeting virtue and stability as if Tangata Fenua were the archetype of perfection, that New Zealand, Aotearoa, truly is the holy land. People just haven't realized it yet. I try remembering comfort. When I wasn't ashamed of wearing my green stone, my friends, before ancestry transformed their hugs into fists when my koro, was more kind than vicious. When my Pakiaha grandmother had no regrets about choosing a Maori man as her husband, opposing her Anglo-Saxon pedigree, but now apologizes for her children's dark skin, I attempt to revive benevolence in segregated spaces, but to no avail. Where do I run to? When both roads shun my approach, excusing themselves from my bloodline, unsure of how to handle a mutt, my family, pushes me towards the hearth while Hawaii stands by stoking the flames and havens are non-existent for interwoven offspring, so I wander on unwelcome coastlines and abandoned kinship, looking for origins to call home.